Coming up, Giannis can't be stopped by the Sixers, and the Lakers are on the outside looking in at the playoffs. This is Locked On Now NBA. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are Locked On Now. Welcome in. You're listening to Locked On Now NBA, local experts on the biggest stories on the hardwood. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. We've got all our Locked On NBA hosts here to help recap everything from Tuesday night. We're going to kick things off with the Bucks, who took a win home out of Philly in last night's biggest game. The biggest game. It was a lot of star power sitting right next to each other in the Eastern Conference standings, and they collided in Philadelphia on Tuesday night. The Bucks and Sixers definitely didn't disappoint. Giannis was the biggest star of the night for the winning side, and Locked on Bucks recaps a thriller that has big playoff implications. What's up, everyone? Kane Pittman here from Locked on Bucks. Just second after what might have been one of the more entertaining games of the NBA regular season, uh, not just with Milwaukee, but right across the league. The Bucks get the win, 118 to 116. Uh, we know these teams uh, in a virtual tie heading into this game record-wise, so it does mean something for the standings. But overall, this was just two good teams that went at it, particularly in the fourth quarter. They were making shot for shot. There was some good defense, and often it didn't matter. But the thing I love about this, another MVP statement from Giannis. He finished with 40 points, 14 rebounds, six assists, a couple of big blocks, but it's the way that he closed this game. And off the dribble, long two. He didn't pass the ball up. He's hit clutch free throws in the biggest stage of all time. He wanted to be at the line. He went there. He knocked down the first one, and then he came up with a big block. Interestingly enough, perhaps the goal 10 review helped the Bucks in the end. It went to a center jump ball, and the Bucks were able to uh, ensure that they got this 118-116 win. But two MVP candidates going at it with Giannis and Embiid, and Giannis got the nod tonight. No panic with this Bucks team. They won on the road before. They were trailing for much of this game. But in the fourth quarter, they closed it out. And uh, this was a fun one. Playoff basketball right around the corner. And this uh, gave us a little taste of that. They tried some things offensively. They tried some things defensively. We're going to break it down on the post-game pod, wherever you get your podcasts, or on YouTube. The Bulls have not been the same team they were the first half of the season, but Chicago still had enough to take care of the Wizards last night and keep pace in a tight Eastern Conference standings. Locked on Bulls tells you how a pair of Chicago stars connected for big nights in the win. I'm Hayes, one of the hosts of Locked on Bulls, and the Chicago Bulls had one of their most balanced games of the recent stretch of losses that they've had. The Bulls come out with a win against the Washington Wizards with Vooch having one of the Nikola Vucevic having a great game from basically from start to finish. One of the things that Billy Donovan did different in this game is feeding Vooch early and then still going to him in the second half. DeMar DeRozan came on with 14 points in the fourth quarter. Also, Patrick Williams, the the young stud of the Chicago Bulls, which many fans have been calling to, for him to play more minutes, played 20. Six minutes in this game, his most minutes since his return from injury, um, and he played key dividends in this game, having three offensive rebounds, seven rebounds overall in a game where the team needed every one of those extra possessions. The Bulls also held on to the lead and fought off a big run by the Washington Wizards in the third quarter and responded to that very well, winning the fourth quarter by 11 points. This was a win that the Bulls needed. This is a win that the Bulls fan base needed on top of that, and it really feels good to see the Chicago Bulls finally finally win a game and get back in the win, winning column with a defining win. Now, we see if the Chicago Bulls can match this effort against the Clippers coming up in their next game, but at least for now, the Chicago Bulls took care of business and the fan base is happy. The Brooklyn Nets need wins as they try to stay on the right side of the playing tournament. Brooklyn got one last night, but it wasn't as easy as you might have expected over the Pistons, or at least that was the thinking from Locked On Nets postgame. Doug Norrie locked on Nets here after Brooklyn squeaks out a win against the lottery-headed Pistons, 130-123 to at home. Brooklyn, they need to win every game here down the stretch. After the loss against Charlotte, they're still in the playing game, going to probably stick there. Now it's just a matter of what playing game they're going to play in or how many. Uh, they needed to win this game against Detroit. Detroit was definitely up for the challenge early, seemed to hit every three-pointer in the first half, completely dominated on the offensive boards. 
uh, over the Nets, which has been a recurring problem for Brooklyn in the short term. But Brooklyn still has Kevin Durant, and Kevin Durant was able to drop 41 points out of uh, 11 rebounds, threw in some timely blocks there at the end as well. And when you have Kevin Durant, you are going to be at a major advantage. In the end, the game that was a little more difficult than probably most fans would have liked, but a win is a win, and we're going to be talking about it all over on the Locked On Nets podcast. The Pistons stayed in the mix against Brooklyn, thanks in large part to their rookie. Locked on Pistons says that's why the rookie of the year should be Cade Cunningham. This dude, Cade Cunningham, that th- this dude right here, this dude, this dude is just unbelievable. He is, he's unbel- he's the rookie of the year. I don't want to hear it no more. He's absolutely unbelievable. The Pistons lose this game to the Brooklyn Nets, one thirty to one twenty three. But screw the game itself. Screw, screw the loss. It helps the tank. Helps the lottery odds. All that stuff. Yada yada. Whatever. Cade Cunningham is freaking. Unbelievable. I believe he had 28 points in the second half. At halftime, he had hurt his, his tailbone. It didn't look like he was going to come back. I said that he looked like he was walking around. He was hurt. Didn't think he should be out there. It looked like he was trying to play through hurt. And he absolutely shut me up. He went out there and balled out 17 points in the fourth quarter against Kevin Durant. He literally did his best to lead the Pistons to possibly pulling off a victory against a team that everyone thinks could win the Eastern Conference. He, he's, he's absurd, bro. 34 points, 6 assists of 13 and 24 shooting. Just big play after big play after big play late against one of the best players in the entire NBA in Kevin Durant. This man, Kate Cunningham, is, is ridiculous, bro. He's ridiculous. Injured and all. Hurt and all. Tailbone messed up and all. Went out there and did this. He's, 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 he's a rookie of the year, dog. That's all I got for y'all. Coming up, the Lakers lose a big one while the Clippers make a big comeback. This is Locked On Now NBA. This episode of Locked On Now is brought to you by Bet Online. It's the best source for all of your online gambling needs. Of course, it's the perfect time to check them out with the Final Four coming up, as well as the National Championship, and also the NBA playoffs right around the corner. They don't just do basketball, they've got you covered for everything you want to bet on. So just head over to betonline.net. Welcome back to Locked On Now NBA. I'm Kainani Stevens. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. This latest loss for the Lakers means a lot as we continue our look around the league. Let's go around the league. With a loss to the Mavericks last night, the Lakers would not be a playoff team if the season ended right now. LA is the 11th team in the West and playing without both LeBron and Anthony Davis for the moment. So Locked on Lakers tries to find a positive spin on L.A. as they keep spiraling. This is Andy Kamenetsky, co-host of the Locked on Lakers podcast, and the Lakers lose 128-110 to the Mavericks in Dallas. No LeBron, no Anthony Davis, and that was way too much for these Lakers to overcome. Nice games from Russell Westbrook, 25 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, just 2 turnovers. Malik Monk. 28 points, 10 of 16 from the field, 6 of 10 from behind the arc. But in all, the talent discrepancy was just way too much for this team to overcome. Stanley Johnson said after the game that they're pros. Nobody should have them down by 30. But unfortunately, even if that's the case, it doesn't take that much to keep them down by 20. They really need LeBron and AD back. Chris Haynes from Yahoo reported during the TNT broadcast that his sources say LeBron is not expected to play on Thursday versus Utah, but there is some optimism that if Anthony Davis reacts well to his first full practice since January, he could be available either Friday versus New Orleans or Sunday versus Denver and goes without saying the Lakers desperately need those guys back if they are going to attempt to keep themselves in the play and and at least try to make some type of noise at all. A lot more to get into, so make sure that you're subscribing to the Locked on Lakers YouTube channel and that you're making Locked on Lakers your first listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Clippers gave the Jazz flashbacks of last year's playoffs last night in L.A. Utah gave up a huge lead and lost on the road as Paul George made his return to the court known. Locked on Clippers and Jazz recap the big comeback. What is going on, Clips fans? Chuck Wachler here, one half of the hosting duo over at Locked On Clips, coming at you after the Clippers come back from down 25 of Paul George's return. He has 34 points. He has not missed a single beat. Reggie Jackson added 21. Isaiah Hartenstein stuffed the stat sheet. Look, we were all hoping it would look good for Paul George. It looked phenomenal. The vibes are immaculate. Another comeback win in the Clippers' hat this year. I don't know if the hype levels have been higher. There's only one thing that can make them even higher than this. We all know what that is, but I'm not going to try and speak about it. 
Whew. Let's hope we don't go down 25 to the Bulls, but right now, Paul George is back, and he looks as good as he absolutely was. The Utah Jazz tonight lost to the Los Angeles Clippers to wrap up their six-game road trip, 1-5, 121-115, but nothing about it is that simple. It was June of last year in Game 6 that the Utah Jazz led the L.A. Clippers 75-50 to early in the third quarter and then lost a 25-point lead, a lead that before the game tonight, Quinn Snyder said was pain that none of them could get over during the offseason. Tonight, the Jazz led by virtually the exact same score. 76 to 51 and the la clippers came back to beat the utah jazz for the clippers it was the fourth time in the second half this year that they've come back from a 20 point deficit it has only happened 10 times all season for the jazz a devastating loss to wrap up a road trip we'll talk about it more on locked on jazz that's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Now NBA. Thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every single weekday. Make sure you check out Locked On NBA and your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Kainati Stevens. This has been Locked On Now.